Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. B, your Creole Connection. On my way to Laurel Valley Plantation, there's a fall festival going on over there today. We're just going to check it out and see what they have to offer. Yeah, so we were right. Uh, as I make my way to the general grounds, we can see that the... Um, festival is kind of centered around this general store here, this store with this open door. And we're going to come back and go through there in just a few minutes. But I want to get a lay of the land. And from where I stand, I can see that it, it's offering paintings and crafts of various types, uh, bread and butter pickles, pralines and fudge, and even a pair of boots. So we're going to come back, but let's go see what else is out here. As a spin on the classic, a Cajun cabin under Van Gogh's lights. And like I said, no matter where you go, there's always a big oak somewhere. Diving port. Apparently there was some type of train that rolled through here years ago. Maybe associated with the uh, harvesting of the sugar cane. And here's Laurel Valley Store, established in 1905. So this general store has been uh, standing for a minute. Let's go inside and see what's going on. And of course, every general store has to have uh, a couple of places to uh, sit. So here we find ourselves in the general store. And we have models of Cajun cabins. Uh, outhouses uh, right here and even an old shrimp trawler and just a wide assortment of souvenirs see uh, scaled models of, of uh, swamp shacks and nine dollar t-shirts to bring back to your family a taste of Creole culture now this wall is utterly fascinating with mostly tools and uh, tools for the field worker and homemakers, mostly cutting tools and pails and primitive pumps. And over, uh, just over here, you have a wall of harnesses and leather goods and the makings and fixings of, to, to create dolls and children toys. So if you're ever in Thibodeau and you see the Laurel Valley store sign, well, this is a quick inventory of what the store, what the store has to offer. We've seen this before, haven't we? This is the Oak Alley Plantation out in Bashery on the old, old River Road. And that's one of the cabins here at, Oak, at the Laura Valley that was damaged by the hurricane. And I think some of the damage is still being captured here. Just a lot of antiquity. models to capture the feel of the day. Baskets, kettles, kitchenware, and on and on. Oh, that's nice. in out of Rosa Parks. I'll tell you one thing, it still has a lot of character, color. Hey, look at this. I love exhibits like this one. Uh, and this is especially nice for people who collect old farm equipment or who have an interest and knowledge in this sort of thing. My fascination has always been the way this this equipment weathers, the rust patterns and the corrosion. I mean, it looks like pieces of art. 
the way it weathers. Of course, this is South Louisiana and no visit to South Louisiana is complete unless you see John Deere green and yellow in a garage somewhere. So I'm not sure what this is. looks like, uh, I wanted to say scrap metal, but it seems pretty organized and I don't think it is. Machinery from the earlier days of the sugar, sugar cane plantation. Old tractors, harvesters, and just wood. And now I understand how they are repairing some of the share crop of homes that were destroyed by Hurricane Ida. They seem to have an ample supply of, uh, of wood here. An open door always draws the curious, so let's go in. Let me speculate a bit here. Perhaps this was some type of wood shop and all of these implements were once the shiny tools of a proud craftsman. An old vice, clamps and hammers, and just different things on this wall, uh, a compass and a bucket full of assorted nails, screws and bolts, leather working tools hanging idly from this southern wall. And out we go. Percy's Restaurant. Don't know who Percy was or if it's still in existence. Looks like the conveyor for a fire hose. Yeah, that's what it was. Just different pieces of equipment. It's a big engine of some sort. Amazing. Abandoned truck. And here, on this eastern side, we have machinery, again, wagons. I mean, some person who's interested in a museum of sorts from form implements from the turn of the century would have a field day here because there's all sorts of old machinery and equipment. Look at that. I mean tractor after tractor after tractor. Alice Chalmers. This is a very, very interesting. Look at this one. I don't even understand what I'm looking at here. Obviously a tractor of some sort, but what in the world could this possibly have been used for? A radiator fan? An exhaust, a steering wheel, rims. Very interesting. So, just a lot of vendors plying their wares, trying to make a few Sunday bucks selling arts and crafts. I'm an overcast guy here in. South Louisiana and Thibodeau at the Laurel Valley Arts and Crafts Festival. Not too many people. I would say if I had to guess, probably got get you probably have about 500 people milling about here. Not a lot. Spontaneous advertisement, yes. And that's how close the highway is to this property. It's right there. I mean, it's only about 25 yards away, 30 yards. Let's go see what's going on in this. Let's go see what's going on in this other house here. 
called Sharecropper's House. Circa 1875. Oh, sweet. Did you get the bear? No. 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 Did you Dishes. The big rummage sale. So here we are leaving the main section of the little Arts and Crafts Festival here on Laurel Valley Plantation. So we're going to take a drive down this, this adjacent highway and see if they are working still on the sharecropper cabins that were damaged by Hurricane Ida. Do a work in progress type of visit. Well, as I do a drive-by assessment here, uh, it seems to be, the progress seems to be about in the same place it was the last time I drove through here about three months ago. Some of the houses have been stood up and the others have been braced and those that were on the ground three months ago are still on the ground. So they may be continuing to work, but the work might be inside because there really hasn't been much done uh, in the last three months that I can tell just driving past these structures. Although I do see that this crane that stood here for a hundred years now is on the ground as you can see here it's, it's fallen so i'm not sure why but uh, they may have brought it down intentionally it may have been uh, a dangerous um, feature that's unfortunate so we come back to a very familiar little area right near my house by lafouche flowing lazily from north to south and this is a place of reflection, a place where the leaves flow quietly on the waters and not too many things seem to be very important here at all. So that's the spirit right now as we just think about the events of the last few days and how much turmoil is in the world and how much our channel is dedicated to peace tranquility and reflection of historical places and events and times. As we said in the past, we don't want to be an ostrich and put our heads in the sand and don't recognize the turmoil all, all around us. But I do believe that there's still a place in a crazy world for people who recognize the dangers and all of the uh, conflict and they still seek out a place a place like this one a place where you can understand the world you live in without becoming embroiled in it through anger and frustration and conflict a place to get away and reflect a place where the waters flow quietly and the trees bow gently in the southern breezes this is the place where we are today, by Lafouche. Thinking about the, uh, the time we spent at Laurel Valley Plantation. Thinking about the old tractors that we had the opportunity to view and handle. Thinking about a general store and how important it was once to a community.